Okay, good morning everyone. And um, thank you for joining the class today. Let's um, pray and we will get started. Thanks to each one for joining. Father, thank you for this opportunity to learn and we ask Lord that the things we share uh, will be useful for us and the work we do, and the ministry we engage in, in serving you and serving people. We ask for your guidance and your wisdom to be imparted to us. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, how's everyone doing? Doing all right? Okay. So let's get started. Um, I'll go ahead and share. All right, so we started talking about um, operations, systems, processes, uh, how we put these things in place uh, in the ministry so that every area in the ministry can, uh, can work together. Uh, I'll give some examples uh, on, you know, example of accounting, offering, offering accounting, uh, accounting related things where we have different uh, processes of things that happen and the way things are done and uh, page 20 we stopped somewhere here where we said you know the the goal of creating these systems and processes is so that we can do things with excellence we can do things efficiently uh, we can do things cheaper that means try to save money and we can do things differently so we can be more creative, innovative in the way we are serving people and the way we involve in ministry and so on. So now starting on uh, page 21, uh, think about a simple process that we have. Right? It's about book requests. Now you can think about this. So, like this, we have to think about all the different things that are being done in the church, in the ministry. Right? So we just use a, for a simple example, book request. Book requests can come to us in many different ways. Right? So somebody, uh, anywhere, just imagine, anywhere in India, somebody wants to ask for a few copies of our books. They could send an email. They could make a phone call to the church office. Um, they could write a letter. They could make a request at the book table anywhere, like in any of our locations. Or sometimes when you have a conference outside, we have a table. Somebody can come to the table and say, can you send me this book? It's a request at the book table. Or sometimes they could talk to one of our staff. They may talk to somebody and say, hey, uh, can you please send me uh, this set of books? Now, what we want to do is we want to have something in place where a request, however it comes to us, should be fulfilled. Right? We don't want to miss. Um, if you miss, then, yeah, they will feel bad. They say, hey, I asked. And, and actually, sometimes we do miss. Uh, things happen. But we want to try to do our best, like not to miss a request. So there has to be... so. When all these requests come right now, we have one person who will record the request and put it into, you know, uh, uh, in, into, right now I think we're just using a spreadsheet. So uh, a Google Sheet, the request will go there. Like the name of the person, the address, the correct address, their phone number, uh, what are the book, which language, what are the titles they requested? How many copies? Right? It'll go there. Now, sometimes it could be an individual asking. Sometimes it could be a church. Like a pastor may say, hey, uh, can you send me 50 copies or 100 copies of these titles? Sometimes it could be for a conference. Somebody's having a conference somewhere. They may be having a few hundred people coming or sometimes in thousands. And they will say, can you send me 1,000 copies of this book? or these three titles. Right? So it could be from, from one copy to hundreds to thousands. It doesn't matter. It's all recorded in the same place. So 
one person in the office. So all these requests will come to this person through email, phone, everything. Um, so, so right now it is Shanti in the church office. She will put it into the request list. Right? She keeps adding. Then the people in the warehouse. So there is a warehouse where all we have copies, all the books. So we print and keep. So uh, a minimum stock of 500 copies of every book is there. Minimum stock uh, in different languages. So now um, it is their responsibility to make sure the stock is kept. If it is goes below 500, uh, they will inform uh, Hannah and request will go to the printing press. Please print you know, another 2,000 copies or 4,000 copies of this title, this language. So that, that stock is always kept up to date. Because we don't know. Sometimes suddenly one request will come, please send me 500 copies. Now, of course, we try to be careful. We don't randomly send books and based books. But if it is a conference and there are, let's say, lots of pastors coming, then it's a good thing for us. Because in one place, we can give the books to so many pastors, so many people. It's a good thing. Right? So we check you know, okay, every request. Is it, is it useful? Is it valid? So sometimes if somebody randomly asks something, we would say, can we send fewer books or only three titles? But if it's a genuine opportunity, we should send the books because it can serve so many people. So that we will check. And the person in the warehouse, every day, they look at the requests. Our goal is within two days. Uh, I mean, uh, of course, if it is a very big request, it will take time to pack. But if it's a small request, especially from an individual, within two days, you pack and send it. So as long as the books are there in stock, right? So our goal is within two days, we have to pack and send. Small request. But if it is big one, like, you know, send 500 copies, that will take time because you have to pack that many books and, you know, we have to pack them carefully, all of that. But every day, every day, this packing is happening. And then we have a system where uh, we will take it from. Uh, so it depends on how the books are going out. Usually, it is going out through, uh, we call it, um, I think we, Korea. Um, what's the name of that? Anyway, we are, we are using a courier service. So they'll come, they'll pick up the books and take it. So twice a day, courier service, they come pick up the books. Sometimes we have to go and deliver it to them, right? especially big uh, amounts. When it's a new book and it's like individual packets, so if you're sending single books, for example, when we print a new book, a new title, then we send everybody one month copy. So we have a mailing list. So that we do it through the post office. So that is done differently. These big parcels are done through this parcel company, like a courier company. So, so that happens separately. But the people who are in the warehouse, they are responsible for fulfilling all these requests. So now we have two people who are there. What we also do is, if suddenly there's a request for a big volume of books, then we hire more people to help us do the packing. So we are higher, you know, temporary workers. They'll come, they'll work one day or two days just for packing. You know, you have to pay them daily wages. And they will help us pack the books, send it. Right? The same person in the warehouse is also responsible for maintaining inventory. So if the stock goes down, printing has to happen, it has to come to the warehouse, the stock has to go up. Right? So this process has is put in place and it, it is running every day. Right? So I am not worried. Uh, book request came. Is anything happen? I'm not even checking. Right? Um, Hannah will check. She's ahead of this whole thing. So she, it is her responsibility to make sure things are running. So I just check with Hannah maybe once a month. Is everything going OK? Uh, otherwise, I'm not involved. We will have more. We will talk more about the new books, the, in the quality of the printing, overall, those kinds of things. But running this whole thing, she takes care of it. She has to be responsible to make sure all these people are doing their work and it's happening. 
stalkers maintain all that. That's her responsibility. I'm not directly checking, right? Um, so this is one. Ex so like this, in different areas of the ministry, we have to put the processes in place, make sure everything is working, right? Um, example, media, right? So every Sunday, every Sunday, people are coming to church. In all our locations, Bangalore and Mangalore, they are seeing this as a sermon. Okay, as a sermon is being preached, they are seeing the uh, the the screen content is being displayed. Every week it's happening, but there is a process in place, like how this is going to happen. It it's not like every week, uh, you know, somebody say, "Oh, what to do?" Last minute running and no. So how does this happen? At the end of the month, we inform. So in the beginning of the year, itself, we inform what we have planned for the whole year. So they have an idea. But end of each month, we tell the media team and the IT team, these are the sermons for the next four or five Sundays in the month. So they already know what is the sermon title. So they already have that. So they can start preparing the graphics, those kind of things. They can start preparing. Then every week, generally by the Wednesday of the week, the sermon content is sent to the media team. Right? So they will prepare the PPT and the graphics that go with it. They will prepare. And they will also prepare what goes on the live stream. So within two days, sometimes within one day, two days, they'll prepare everything. Uh, it goes through a QA process. That means somebody checks. Because we don't want any spelling mistake, we don't want wrong graphic in the wrong place, all those things. You know? So somebody, so the graphic team will check, do it, they will check. Now they also send it to me, the PPT, so I will do a quick check. Okay, PPT is okay, I'll send it. I say okay. They will send it to another person for QA check. They check that. Then both say okay. Then they send it to the media, the, the teams in all the locations. So all the locations receive the same PowerPoint. So when the sermon is being preached, all the six locations, five in Bangalore, six, one in Mangalore, or actually two in Mangalore, they all are using the same PowerPoint. Right? So while the pastor is preaching there, the, the PowerPoint is text is coming. Right? But there is a process, how it happens week after week. You know? Because every week, uh, all this has to happen in a, in a good way, efficient way. So when people come to the service, as the sermon is being preached, they can see the PowerPoint and understand. So like this, you have to um, put these processes in place for every area of ministry. right? And then you also have to keep improving. So that's on page 21. Process improvement. That means we have to keep on improving. You know, for example, if people, if there is spelling mistake coming up in the PowerPoint, you don't keep quiet. Well, I don't keep quiet. Monday morning, I will, or sometimes even Sunday or Monday, I will send an email. Hey, there was a spelling mistake here. This should not be happening. Okay? Or sometimes they use the wrong graphic. So I give feedback. So like that, we have to keep on keep our eyes open. Like make sure that. Um, our co the work we are doing keeps on getting better. Yeah. So like that in every area of ministry, everybody should be is is requested to make sure we improve. And also we keep costs down. Yeah. Are we spending too much money? How are we going to keep the cost down? So this process improvement has to happen. We have to take action, make it improve, keep improving it, or, or ongoing. Uh, Right. So uh, we can think of different examples. Like suppose you are having a traveling ministry. What are the things you will need in for somebody who has a traveling ministry to make their ministry, you know, the things happen efficiently? You can think about it. You want to set up a Bible college. You know, what do you think you need in a Bible college? Very complicated. Lots of different things. You take care of students. You take care of the schedule, the teachers. Lots and lots of things to take care of you know, to make sure the Bible College 
uh, is running properly. Uh, every day you have to think from morning till evening has to be planned. So students have meaningful learning. So that is even more complicated to run the Bible college. But we have to think about all these things. Okay. So any questions here about systems and process? I've just kind of, you know, it's not necessarily like all the details, but uh, this is an important part of uh, church or ministry administration. You have any questions about, you know, how we work and uh, any uh, things that you want to know? Yes, please go ahead. Like, Pastor, as we're talking uh, about MPT media, media like uh, how, it, how much it's important to prepare a PowerPoint for the believers. So, can so you know how important is this to have a PowerPoint for believers? Well, I would say it's not very important. Like actually, if if you see in the early days when we did not have these things, we just preached a sermon. There was no you know screen and all that, and people came. They heard they. They themselves took notes and went inside. So for many years, we have done it without PowerPoint and all of that. Then why are we doing it now? Because it helps. Right? That um, if people can see visually, they're listening, but if they can see the scripture, it'll help them. Or if they can see a map or see a graphic, it'll be important. And the, if the point is coming on the screen, the point you want to emphasize, it helps in the learning process. Right? But I'm not saying you have to have it. We have done it without it, and you can do without it. Right? But if you can, if the facility is available, then I think it is useful to have it. But if you're going to do it, it should be done well. Right, with you know, should be done in a good point. So, if you, so the question is, if it's, is it necessary? No, it's not necessary. You can definitely have a, you can definitely preach a sermon without a PowerPoint. But uh, it's useful. But sometimes I think it also makes people lazy because oh, everything is there. <laughs> I don't want to turn. I, I, I prefer when people turn and look at it in the Bible. So if I'm listening to a sermon, I would definitely like to turn and see it in my own Bible, even if there is a PPT. Uh, but today's, you know, people are accustomed to it. And so at least let them see the scripture, you know, or let them see the point that you're making. Uh, the, it is, it, sometimes it makes people a little lazy, I think. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I would prefer if they actually saw it in the Bible. But uh, this is where we are. Yeah. Any other questions? Francis? Yes, so coming to the, the administration thing, like Bible college is running, media, publication. So everything is there, but in case anything is going not going well, it became a big mistake. How will be you responding to them? Like It's like warning them or dismissing them, how it will be? Yeah, so usually I, uh, if there's a, a, you know, so let's say, um, Mistakes keep happening, and so we only, we give feedback that hey, uh, please correct this or that this shouldn't be happening. This shouldn't be happening. So we constantly keep giving feedback, and we understand that there will be things that are outside our control. So, example like two Sundays ago at uh, that auditorium, the Wings Auditorium, the internet was. That particular Sunday, uh, whatever they did, they having they were having internet problem. Actually, the problem was with the router. Yeah. So it's a problem, and it's not anybody's fault. Uh, it's a it happens, and so now people are watching on the live stream. For them, there's the feeling like the, it's buffering too many times. You know, they're seeing it, so their experience is not good. But now. What do we do? So I we had a meeting. I mean, I asked, okay, what happened? So they said, see, there's a problem. Okay, how do we, next time, we don't want the same problem happening. What do we do? So, okay, one is we, uh, we fix the router. But another thing also as a backup, if this time the problem was a router, but what next time is a problem with the 
line itself, the internet connection. So we said, okay, we will get another connection. So we actually have multiple connections because if one connection goes down, we have to switch. And in Bing's, we don't have that. So if today, if if the main connection goes down, that's it. I mean, we have dongles like back, but if you dongle is this video streaming is very slow. So it's okay. Yeah, let's get in. Even though Wings, we are not going to be using. We may use it a few times in the year. Our main location is Chaucer's. We said, but since now we are using it for a few times in a year, let us put our own connection in Wings. We will put it there. It's not very expensive. But we'll put our connection because we also are having some other events like some conferences and all we have over there. So we can use it there. So, so okay, let's do it. So like this, you know, we we try to solve the problem, find solutions and keep going so that overall it should be good. So mistakes will happen or problems will happen and we have to discuss it and find solutions for the future. But if somebody is not doing their work properly, that means it is an individual who is not doing it. In this case, it is other things happening, right? That we have to solve. If somebody is not doing their work, then we have to address it. Then I will call them, I'll talk to them. I see why, what is the reason? So we have to find out the reason why that person is not. So actually, this is the next chapter. We're going to talk about <laughs> human, human resource. How do you work with people? Um, uh, that itself is a big area, you know, uh, we have to, uh, but uh, just to answer your question, we call them, talk to them. What is the problem? Maybe, you know, we haven't given them the equipment they need. Or maybe they don't have the skill. Or maybe they're not upgrading their skill. They're not learning new things. So we have to find out what is the problem. Or sometimes they're not interested or may not be able to do their work. So depending on what the real issue is, we try to help. And if they're not able to rise up to our requirement, then we have to release them. Yeah. Uh, or we may have to change their role, put them in a role that they can do the work. And if they still are not able to do it, then we say sorry. Yeah. yeah, so those kinds of things are there in the ministry. And th those are the difficult things. Uh, we'll talk about it next chapter. Uh, but any the system and the process. Jachan, yes, please go ahead. Pastor, this is about APC publication. So I see that you have written a lot of books, Pastor. So how did you manage in the beginning of uh, your ministry? Oh, Jachan, one minute. There is a little audio problem oh. <laughs> on our side. This is again happened in the morning. Again, it's happening here. I don't know what is the uh, reason. Some the chat pastor one minute ah uh, yes okay go ahead i can hear please go ahead okay so this is about abc publications pastor so in the beginning of the ministry so i've written a lot of books and everything is from the word of god so how did you manage your ministry work and then i heard that you were also working uh, and you also had your company so and your family and this book so all the books you you put so much of uh, work into it so is it something that you set aside some time to write these books or uh, it's for generations so many people are reading it even now and getting so did you know these benefits will happen at that time so many questions i have about apc publications pastor if you can share a little bit about the burden that you had that time to write and uh, mm. little yeah. sounds okay sure i'll do that so um so you know why why how you know how did this whole publications ministry come? So again, it started actually in my teenage years. So as a teen, a teenager, what I used to do is I used to write postcards, and I felt like whenever so whenever I meet some new believer, another I'll say, can you give me your address? I will take that address, and my intent was I will encourage these people by writing letters. So. Uh, I had few, that time it was less small, five, six people, right? And I would pray. I say, God, I'm writing this letter to a friend. They, sometimes they may be in the same city or they may be in another city. Lord, I'm writing this letter. Give me a word for this person. Then I will write the postcard or I will write the inland letter and I'll post it to them. 
it was like an intentional kind of a small ministry through letter writing. So that's how it started. And then people used to say, hey, the, what you wrote to me was very special, very, it touched my heart like that. So I realized that this was a way that I could serve people through letter writing. Those days it was postcards or inland letters. I don't know if any of you have seen inland letters, <laughs> but it used to be the very cheap. Uh, I don't know what those, uh, very cheap. It was like 50 paisa or one rupee or something. I don't know, those days. Right. So then that was like the hub ministry started in my teenagers. Then when I went to college in Manipal, uh, uh, and slowly from that time, uh, I started writing. Uh, longer articles like two three pages and those days we used to we didn't have the rocks machine we used to have cyclostyle like it was a manual way of making copy so i have to write the whole article on paper i will take it to a typist the typist will type it on this special kind of we call it stencil so the typist i, I didn't know how to type so the typist will type it on the stencil then the stencil will go to this machine, these people, they'll manually make copies like that. So before this was before Xerox machine came. So I started doing that. And when I went to college in Manipal, I did my engineering college, I used to write articles like two pages, three pages. I'll get these copies made. Those days will make 50 copies, you know, because that was the number of students or people in you. Then I'll give it to them. When they came for Bible study, I'll say, take. So now it went from writing postcards and letters to these articles, which were like two or three pages. Right? And I wrote on different topics. But the main thing was I wanted them to learn the word of God. Right? So it will be on different topics. So, um, so that happened. Then a computer came, Xerox machines came. <laughs> so when I went to the US over there, Again, I started writing articles, but now it was easier because I had a computer. So I could write on the computer. Uh, I would again write these articles, two or three pages, uh, get them Xeroxed, and I will post them to the people I knew. Again, there I would collect their addresses and I will mail it. Again, it was not much, 20, 30 people like that. So, But it was the idea was I want to minister to them through the printed page, through these articles. Some of the books we have today actually started as articles. For example, Fulfilling God's Purpose for Your Life. Um, um, uh, I'm just trying to think. So other, other topics, you know, like uh, uh, we have a book, Our Redemption. Uh, we have a book, um, so these uh, Understanding the Prophetic. So the book Understanding the Prophetic, today you see a thick book. But when I first wrote it, it was only like about, I think, six pages. But it started with that, you know, understanding the prophetic. This is all I know, six pages. <laughs> but it started with that, you know. So I would make Xerox copy, send it out, right? So it started, and uh, so, but I kept all those content with me, right? I mean, the, the, the from the computer, so those, those articles. And then uh, the first book uh, was printed in, I think it was 1994. Uh, I was still in the US, but I got it printed here in India. It was a book on finances, uh, God's word for our money. You know? So it was just scriptures, promises, and God's provision. That's all. Uh, it's a very small little book. It is printed as a book. I don't have any copy of it now, but it was then done in 1994. Again, the idea was I will print and I'll give it for free. Again, the reason I wanted to give it for free was I also realized that not everybody can afford to buy a book, right? Especially if you print it like, you know, in a nice way and all, uh, 50 to 100 rupees, 200 rupees. Not everybody can go and buy it. Secondly, in India, you don't have Christian bookstores in every city. So even if you print, how will you give it to the people? If you put it in Christian bookstores, it's only very limited. Some cities have Christian bookstores, some don't. So the thought was, OK, I'm not going to do it that way. I'm going to do it different. We will print it, and we will post it directly to the people. Something like how, in the beginning, I was writing letters. Now it is just in a book form. So we printed that first book with just promises on God's provision for our life. 
and posted it. Just send it by post, free. Say, God, you provide. You will freely give. The main thing is uh, it has to reach people. So all this was happening. So the, the thought was always there. When we go back to India and start the church, this will be one of our ministry. We will write books, send it for free. Main thing is get it to the villages, get it to those people outside the cities, because they need the word, and this is one way we can reach them. And then also translate it into many languages, Indian languages. So that was the plan. So we came here, then when we started the church, from the first year itself, we started printing. So I, I took those articles and then expanded it. You know, like, okay, fulfilling God's purpose for your life was like maybe nine pages. But let's make it like a little bigger book. And now I'm, I want to bring it in a more complete book. It's What's there is now more like an outline. So like that, you know, just kept working on it. Uh, and then, uh, so how do we, you know, how did we write? So some books are easy, some are little tiny little books, they're very easy to do. Uh, and then uh, we work, you know, it's easy to sit and write. But here's what happens. Um, there are books that I just sit down and give time to it to write. It'll be written over uh, many weeks. So for example, Timeless Principles. I, I forget which year it was, but I just sat down, like almost like a, a full month, just I'm going to write. I need to finish this book. So just put time and effort, hours, hours in the day. So that during that time, I won't meet people too much. I'll try to just focus on writing the book. But it's worth the effort, because if you put that effort in, you do it only once, then that book can be printed over and over again and reach many people, right? So it's worth doing that. The other approach I take is a lot of these books come out of the sermons that we preach. So whenever I'm, like for example, every almost every sermon series, I actually write it in the form of a book, like the book of Acts. I write it as a book and I keep, we preach the sermons. But actually, I going through the preaching the book of Acts, I've actually already developed a book for the book of Acts, which has all these sermon notes. but the book will be in an expanded form. It will have a lot more than what we have preached in the sermon or what is in the sermon notes, right? So it's kind of being worked in parallel. Uh, and then what I do is uh, many topics, the book is there, but I keep preaching it. And every time I preach it and interact around it, I go back and I update the book on that topic. So example, end times. Um, the book... Content was actually written a few years ago, but we haven't released it yet because I am seeing how can I best present this content. And as I keep teaching the course, or I keep doing a weekend school, or people ask me questions, I go back and I update the content of the book. So the book becomes, it's growing, right? Uh, the, it's, it's growing. Then what I'll do is I'll say, okay, now it's time to release it as a book. Then I will sit and I'll finish the book, like bring it to a, format that it can be printed, then send it off for printing. So some books are written over years. Yeah, like it's constantly you're adding to it, you're writing in, and then you come, to, you bring it to a point when you say, okay, now I'm ready to release this because it is addressing all the questions, all the common things. So some books are actually uh, written away. So if, on my, if, for, for example, right now, I probably have like uh, over a hundred titles. Um, that I'm kind of working on means like these books will come out in the future, um, and uh, on different topics. So I, I keep working on it as I, you know, ideas keep coming, keep going back and updating. It's all here. So I have a folder saying new books, and all these things are listed there. The word documents, all the templates are there. Keep working on it. Keep working on it, and then as and when it's ready, I feel it's ready to be released. Uh, I will release it. So, for example. The month of October, I, I I will not be preaching. Like I haven't scheduled myself to preach on any Sunday. Uh, all the Sundays, all locations, other pastors are going to preach. Uh, what am I going to do in October? I'm going to focus on getting two books out. So I'm going to put instead of you know investing my time in preparing and preaching the Sunday sermons, uh, we've already planned all locations. Other pastors are going to be preaching, and so I will put intensely put effort into bringing out two books. So, because I feel, okay, it's time to bring those books out. 
bring it out. Like one is a, a revised, so who we are in Christ, uh, this will be like a revised edition, a, a more complete edition. And then one one will be a new topic. And if I can manage, I'll try to squeeze in a third book. But the goal is in October to, for me to finish at least two, maybe three, release them. But these things have been worked on over, over time. Now it's like, it's time to release it, so I'll work on it. Um, yeah, so that's kind of hope that gives you a little idea, Judge, of uh, how these uh, how these are worked upon. And any questions? I'm happy to answer. Yes, yes, Pastor. Thank you so much. For sharing. Okay. Yeah, and also I noticed that it's like uh, we kept it to the black and white edition, not uh, done any color or anything. So is that a principle that you kept in mind, Pastor? Uh, yeah. The quality of the paper is really good. And it's for everyone can read and it's all. But then I see that all the books are printed black and white. So is that some principle that we follow? Yeah. So that was an intentional choice from the very beginning. The goal was let's keep this as low cost as possible, right? Um, because we're getting giving it free. So one of the ways to keep the cost down is just do a black and white cover. Because every time you add a color, the cost goes up. So we said, okay. Uh, you know, we don't want impressive covers. Keep it black and white because the content is more important than the cover. Let people read the books because of the content and not because of the cover. So from beginning, uh, we from our very first book, that is from 2000, the year 2000, uh, we only printed black and white. Do what we can with shades of gray in it, <laughs> but it's all treated as you know a single color. So it's a single color print. So the cost is very low. So we can actually just give it for free yeah that was the intention yeah thank you thank you pastor yeah. okay any other questions all right so let's move now to the um, i'll just get just introduce the topic then we we'll go for a break uh which is on uh, stuff Staff, church staff management. So, in any ministry, maybe this is one of the most challenging areas. Okay, it is about the managing the people. You know, it's okay, easy. I can put this process in place. I can put this system in place. I can have the equipment in place. All that is there. But taking care of the people, that is a very big challenge. It's an ongoing thing. So how do we do it? I, we'll, we'll talk about it. So uh, right now at APC, we have three kinds of, uh, or three groups of people. We have people who are staff. That means they are full-time staff, paid by the church. They're all paid a salary. Or they work full-time, that is at least 40 hours a week. And they have benefits. We give them, for all the staff, health insurance, uh, employment fund, uh, paid leave. Uh, paid leave is, uh, let's see, 20 days, I think. 20 days of paid leave, uh, another six days of sick leave. So all these benefits are there for all the staff, full-time staff. Then we have consultants. Consultants basically are anybody who works hourly. That means they don't get a fixed salary. They only get paid for the number of hours they work. Um, so we have, so we right now we have about thirty staff, uh, maybe thirty-two, thirty something like that, thirty, thirty-two staff. Uh, we also have about thirty people who are consultants who are paid hourly. So every month they have, uh, they will fill up the timesheet and then. Based on the hourly rate, they calculated they are paid. So for them, there are no benefits. Like they don't have, we don't give health insurance or any of the other benefits. And most of them work from home, right? So they don't have to come to the office. Uh, you know, and they, some of them, work from other cities, uh, also. And then we have volunteers. So we have a big group of volunteers, almost 250, 300 volunteers. These people are people who are giving their time and their skill as a service to the Lord, and they are taking some responsibility in the church, doing something in church. So we have about, I would say, around 
usually the average is 300 people who are serving volunteer, as volunteers across uh, our Bangalore, Mangalore locations. Uh, what is not shown here is our outreach pastors. So uh, our outreach pastors are also treated like staff. So we have, a, that means these are people outside Bangalore who are taking care of our churches outside. So obviously they don't come to the office, they're, there, they're working wherever they are. But they get the same benefits. That means they get a salary every month. Uh, health insurance is there. Um, yeah. Uh, so they get that. And a PF, I'm not sure whether I'm, I'm not sure whether we do PF for them, but we they are all covered by health insurance that I know. Um, and they're outside around the country, they are working. And every month they get their salary. And we give them additional in, to take care of their local church. So there are about, I think, about 15 people like that. Uh, so they're, they're, they're also treated like staff, but they're not people who come to the office. They are working. They're big outreach pastors, right? Wherever they are, they're taken care of. So that's our team. Now we have to take care of all these people, right? We have to treat them well. Uh, we have to uh, make sure that you know they're able to do their work. Uh, we have to also, if there are problems, we have to take care of those issues, right? So we want to talk about that. How do we manage all these people? How do we take care of those people? Uh, then there will be problems. I mean, not there will be. There there are problems where uh, you know people problems. How do we work with them? How do we sort them out? So on. And uh, so I'm going to share with share things with you. Uh, and I, I have to say, it's a learning process, right? We we don't start perfect. I made many mistakes over the last 20 years. Uh, Try to learn. I mean, I, I know there's the business side of things where, see, in the business side of which the company that I was running, uh, we can be a little bit more, yeah, if you're not doing your job, Take your letter, leave. We can be like that, you know. Church, it's a little. You have people expect a little, great, lot not little, not little, but lot of grace. <laughs> you have to you have to work differently. At the same time, you have to get the work done. So in the business side, it's okay. I've told you what to do. Do it. If you don't do it, thank you very much. You know, it's a little different. You can people are okay that that's corporate setting. You can treat. It's a little different. Church side, uh, how do you balance grace and mercy with, hey, work has to get done? You know? How do you bring it together? It's a, it's a little, takes a little bit more uh, wisdom. And I had to learn. I made lots of mistakes, especially in the beginning. I, I, I would treat people like as I was treating in the company, you know, I would send an email to them. <laughs> I made lots of mistakes. Then I had to learn. You know, it's a little different here. Corporate, okay. There, the mindset is different. But church, different. Uh, I have to learn. Okay. Uh, so I will. I'll go through it. But at the same time, uh, we want to follow. Uh, we want to do things right. Right. So I will explain how. We do this, how we hire people, etc. What goes on into it, and all that. Okay, so we'll take a break, and we will we will share these things, and then uh, you please feel free to ask questions. Okay, uh, the more you can learn about this, it's it will be useful for the ministry. So we'll take a break. Come back at eleven. Okay, thank you. <laughs> 